Um, next, I'm going to talk about the Maryland uh, Second Look Act. Um, so as we've talked a little about, Maryland um, incarcerates the highest percentage of Black people in the entire country at 71% of our prison population, which is more than twice the national average. Um, Maryland also leads the nation in sentencing young Black men to the longest prison terms at a rate of 25% higher than the next nearest state, which is Mississippi. Um, and these facts underscore a pressing and really deeply troubling racial justice issue within Maryland's criminal legal system. And if we're serious about decarcerating our um, prison uh, population, um, the only way to do that um, is by, and if we're serious about reducing existing racial disparities, um, we need to create more meaningful avenues to bring people home, um, which is why this session, the ACLU alongside the Maryland Second Look Coalition, um, is supporting the passage of the Maryland Second Look Act, um, which seeks to address Maryland's extreme race disparities and advance public safety by allowing people who, have who are currently serving extreme sentences and have served at least 20 years um, the opportunity to petition the court to modify or reduce their sentence um, based on the dem their demonstrated rehabilitation. Um, and this is really important because the status quo does not afford meaningful opportunity for release. The devastating lock them up and throw away the key mentality for the last 30 years has led to harsh um, changes to law and policy. And in Maryland, we actually used to have a process um, that allowed judges to evaluate cases um, for people serving long sentences at any time. However, due to a rule change in 2004, um, that, that was eliminated. Um, and also for more than 25 years, Maryland's parole system was not available for people serving um, life with parole sentences, uh, which has also which has contributed to the blow to prison system um, that we are seeing today and its extreme racial disparities. Um, and even though now that we've taken the governor out of the you know majority of the parole process, it's still not enough to that process is still not enough to remedy the um, decades of wrongful denials. So it's really critical that we create this opportunity through the Second Look Act um, to allow individuals to um, have that second look. Um, and the other thing I'll mention is that most of you might be familiar with the Juvenile Restoration Act that passed in 2021. Um, and that bill allowed individuals who are currently incarcerated, um, who were incarcerated while they were in the age under the age of 18 and sentenced to long sentences to be able to petition the court to modify and reduce their sentences. But that bill was only retroactive, meaning it only applied to people who are currently incarcerated, not people who are coming in behind them. Um, so that bill essentially was ended the day it was signed. And this bill is essentially an extension of the Juvenile Restoration Act, which would apply to the rest of the population. Um, and the important distinction also between parole and uh, sentence modification is that unlike court hearings, um, parole is not a judicial hearing. So people almost have no due process rights and no legal representation to uh, help them prepare for strong presentations, um, which is another reason why this um, is really important. Um, and the other thing is, Equally important is that in the immediate aftermath of a serious harm, emotions are high and it may be difficult for a sentencing judge to determine a person's capacity for change. But many years later, a judge can assess the person's growth, progress and rehabilitation um, behind bars based on their actual track record. Um, and what's been really disturbing um, with Maryland, as we've talked a little bit about, is that um, Maryland's prison system is filled with Black people who have been excessively sentenced or denied parole based on the super predator methodology. Um, and a broad second look bill um, would ensure that af um, decades after a crime, census can be reviewed based on the current understanding of fairness and racial justice. Um, what was acceptable in the courts 20, 30 years ago should not be acceptable now, and judges should be able to evaluate these cases. Um, and we strongly believe that this bill represents a vital step towards justice, um, especially for those who have encountered bias in their sentences, I mean, their interactions with law enforcement, the courts, and corrections. Um, so for all those reasons, we believe this bill is a really critical bill, um, and it will be sponsored by Delegate Cheryl Pastor in the House. Um, she re represents a district in Baltimore County, I believe it's District 11, um, and it, this bill will also be sponsored by Senator Jill P. Carter in the Senate.